Hello, fellow student. Thank you for stopping by. You are welcome to LSR Fashion. Today, you are definitely gonna be thanking your stars for coming across this video and for clicking on this video. You see this beautiful apparel you are seeing on this beautiful lady right now in your screen. We are gonna be learning everything from A to Z. This is a so along video. Even if you've never shown in your life, following this video, you can achieve exactly what you are seeing on your screen right now. Today, I come your way with fashion and sewing tips tricks and easy ways of sewing this video is a fashion game and life changer it's gonna revolutionize level up spice up your fashion and sewing skills it's an a to z full tutorial this is an all-in-one video from drafting to cutting to sewing to styling to designing to finishing and to fitting you don't need to watch any other video to be able to understand everything about these trending styles after watching this video so right now i want you to take a chill pill stick and stay and keep watching to the end of this video don't skip any part of this video maybe that would be the part you would need to revolutionize your sewing skills all right let's get started these are the measurements needed for this tutorial so these are the materials we are going to be needing for this tutorial the first material on my list is my thread i'm gonna be using this invisible zipper i prefer to usually go for the invisible zipper so i'm gonna be using this invisible zipper i'm also gonna be making good use of this boning this is the ridge lane and the plastic boning i'm gonna be using both of them for this tutorial i'm also gonna be using these two bra cup this is a half bra cup it's not a full one this is because the style i'm gonna be making is an off shoulder dress i'm gonna be using this for the lace up of the corset next on my list i'm gonna be using this to kind of get something similar to what my customer asked for and to also add some sort of flavor to the style this is the main material i'm gonna be using so in these tutorials i'm not gonna be using a lining or interfacing because this fabric is stretchy at one side i'm also gonna be making sure that the stretchy part of this fabric aligns to be the horizontal part of this dress that way i don't need any lining or any interfacing so kindly stick and stay to see how i'm gonna be making my way out this time last the scissors is gonna be making the magic so let's get started so the first part is we're gonna be cutting the down part of this dress in order to fold your fabric the best way so that you wouldn't waste material or waste fabric at the end of the day you need to first of all use the biggest circumference of your body so in this case it's gonna be the down part of this skirt so i'm gonna be using the down part of this skirt and that will determine the horizontal length of this fabric and for the length of the fabric you're gonna be using the full length of your skirts or your dress plus the allowances you're gonna be adding so in that case you end up not wasting a lot of fabric that is exactly what i did next i'm gonna be drawing an horizontal line on top of the fabric this line is going to be serving as my waistline or my starting point and from then i'm gonna be inputting my vertical measurement so my vertical measurement include my hip point for the knee point you don't use exactly your knee point you come up by three inches from your knee point that way you can create room for your client to be able to move and walk freely and the full length of this skirt I'm also going to be transferring the same thing to the other side of the fabric. Then once I was done, I'm going to be squaring this point out to form an horizontal lines. That way, it's going to make it easy for me to be able to input all my horizontal measurements. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is inputting my horizontal measurement. Left. I'm not going to be adding that to this dress because it's a stretchy fabric first horizontal measurement i'm gonna be inputting is my waistline for all horizontal measurements we divide it by four this is because our fabric is folded into four two for the back and two for the front so that way i'm going to be dividing all my horizontal measurement by four and i'm going to be marking since this fabric is a stretchy fabric i'm gonna be subtracting half an inch from all my horizontal measurements so that this can give my client a fitting effect and once i was done i'm gonna be adding one each allowances all around 
quarter of hip circumference plus one inch allowance. Moving to the knee circumference, I'm going to be subtracting one inch from my hip circumference. And that is what I'm going to be marking at my knee. That way, it can give me that curvy effect at the knee level. Once I was done marking, I'm going to be adding my one inch allowance. Once that was done and okay, I'm going to be connecting the points using my hip curve and my rule. One trick you're going to be taking notes at this point is at the hip point i'm gonna be going down by two inches and i'll be marking it then i will connect it to the hip point that way it kind of get rid of that bulginess and that funny look at the hip area that way it's also gonna be creating a room for your hip to be able to sit perfectly another trick you're also gonna be taking note is from the knee level i'm gonna be coming down by four inches and i'm gonna be making a curve to join with the knee line that way it's gonna be creating that curvy effect so that it wouldn't look sharp and pointed when you are done sewing for the hem of the dress i'm gonna be taking exactly what i measured on the hip line then i'll be adding nine inches to that so you could go for eight inches ten inches six inches depending on how full you want it to be so i'm going for nine inches and i'll be marking it to connect with the knee curve and i'm also going to be tipping the edge of the dress one very important thing to take note is the slope at the center front of the dress so for the center front slope, i'm gonna be coming down by half an inch at the center front and i'll be connecting it to the side front that way it get rid of any bulginess at the front part of the dress when your customer wears it this will make the whole thing lie flat and perfect on the center front of your customer once i was satisfied i'm gonna be cutting out the whole thing what we are cutting out now is for the front alone. This is the front piece alone. And the fabric is also on fold. When we are done and we open it up, we're going to be having a full front skirt piece. This is how it's going to look like when we open it up. When we are done cutting this one, we will now be moving to cutting the back separately. For the back, we need two different pieces. We don't need a full piece like this front because we are going to be putting a zipper at the center back which is the middle of the bag, there is going to be a zipper there. For that matter, we will need two different pieces to be able to attach our zipper. It's either you put your fabric on fold and at the end of the day, you cut it through to get two pieces or you put two pieces together before you start your cutting. I'll be clipping it down with my mini pegs. To keep it in place and in shape. Now, let's now move to cutting of the back. First of all, I'm placing the front piece on top of the fabric for the back piece. This is because the only difference between the back and the front is the zipper allowance, which should be at the, the center back. So I'm gonna be leaving out one inches as my zipper allowance. Another difference between the back and the front is the waistline. So for the back, the waistline, we don't give it the slope so the back is supposed to be straight we don't give it any slope okay that's the only two differences between the front and the back apart from that every other thing is same we are done cutting this part we'll be moving to how to cut and design the upper part of this dress in that session you're going to be learning how to even attach bra cups to your bustiers bra cups to your dresses and even how to insert eyelets into your dresses so this video is a full coverage video okay now that we are done let's move to the next section whilst i was drafting this on the fabric I finished before i realized my camera was not actually recording kindly pardon me to use the pattern paper to illustrate what i did exactly it is the same thing i'm not going to change anything or so you can directly do this on your fabric or you can also do it on a pattern paper and later transfer it to your fabric either of the two ways we're gonna work go ahead and decide which of the method work best for you if you're not a beginner you can go ahead and draft this directly on your fabric but if you're a beginner i would advise you use the pattern paper so that when you make a mistake you can easily correct it before you ruin your material 
but for the back where they think the camera was able to capture that first thing is we're gonna start drafting the front piece of the bodies on the pattern paper before we start we need to determine the amount of flesh we want to show at the chest area that is from the shoulder to the upper chest you can go for four inches five inches six inches depending on how much flesh or the amount of cleavage you want to show for my client she says she doesn't want to show a lot of cleavage so i'm also going to be needing half an inch to be able to join this piece to the line instead of five inches i will subtract half an inch from the five inches so should now give me four four point five inches so i'm going to be taking away four point five inches the half inch should be used for joining allowance so at the end of the day everything will now be five inches so i'll start taking my measurement from the four point five inches. now the next thing is i'm going to be inputting my bus point my bus point is 10.5 inches i'll mark that then i'll move to under my bus under my bus point is 13.5 inches i'm also going to be marking that now the last thing to mark now is my half length that is the part i'm going to be joining to the down part of this dress and that is 16 inches i'm going to be marking that i'm also going to be adding half an inch for joining allowance remember that is the part we're going to be joining to the skirt part of this dress so for that matter we'll need to add half an inch for that joining allowance i'm going to be transferring those same points at the other side of the pattern paper so that i can easily square them out when i'm done marking them out i'm going to be squaring them out using my rule to get horizontal lines Next, i'm going to be dividing my bust pan into two and i'm going to be marking that when i say bust pan bust pan is the distance between one nipple to the other nipple the bust pan i'm using is seven inches i'm going to be dividing seven inches by two that will give me 3.5 inches i will also need half an inch to be able to join these pieces together when i'm done cutting i'll be adding half an inch to the 3.5 inches which will now give me four inches so I'm going to be marking 4 inches at the half length line and straight to the chest line. I'll be connecting those two points with the help of my rule. Next, I'm going to be marking 1 inch towards the center front from that line we just finished drawing. I'm also going to be marking 1.5 inches at the side front from that same line at the half length. We'll also have to move to under the bust. Do the same thing there. Continue to the chest line and also do the same markings there using my rule i'll be connecting those points together to form a vertical lines moving forward from the bus point i'm gonna be going up by half an inch and coming down by half an inch this will get rid of the bus point being so pointed it's also going to create room to be able to accommodate your bus and making your bus relax very well in the dress then with the help of my I'm whole room. I'm gonna be connecting the point from under the bust to the half an inch line I came down with. If you don't also have a rule, you can go ahead and use your free hand. So the second one, I'm using my free hand so that you can see how to also go about it. Now from the chest point, I'm gonna be connecting it to that half an inch I came up by, and I'll be doing the same to the other side of the chest line. That is it for the dart. So this is what we call that. Always feel free to blend out if you have pointed lines. Our body is all curvy. Try to always blend out if you end up getting pointed lines. Next, from the chest line, we're going to be coming down by 1.5 inches for our center front slope. And we're going to be curving that point to join with the dart area of the center front. So our center front slope is the amount of space we are ready to show in between our bust. And let's look at your screen right now to see what I mean by the center front slope. Next, I'm going to be marking my armhole line. The armhole line I'm using is 7 inches. If you don't also mind, you could come up by... 2.5 inches to 3 inches from your bust point to get your armhole line for your body tube bustiers or better still you can divide your bust by 6 plus 1.5 inches to also get that figure once i was done marking that 7 inches i'm going to be squaring it out to get an horizontal line moving forward we're going to be dividing our bust circumference into four that is quarter of our bust circumference i'm going to be marking that at the bust point i'll also be marking that same measurement on the upper bust line once that was okay i'm going to be dividing my under bust circumference into four 
which is also quarter of my underbus circumference. I'm going to be marking it at the underbus line. Moving forward, I also mark the dart allowance, which is 2.5 inches, and I'll be adding it. Once I was done marking that, I'm also going to be moving to the half length. Divide my half length circumference into four, mark that. Also measure the dart allowances, which is 2.5 inches, and also add that. At the upper bus line, I'm going to be measuring the dart allowances at the dart area, then I'll be adding it to the bus measurement I already put there. Then from that line, I'm going to be making a curve line to join with the dart side front. And this curve is now my armhole. We are going to be joining all these points, starting from the upper bus point, linking it to the half length point. I'm going to be drawing. I'm going to be drawing a straight line to connect this point. Now that all is done, we're also going to be considering our joining allowance. And the allowance I want to use is 2.5 inches. But this fabric we are dealing with is a stretchy fabric. For that matter, we don't have to use the exact circumference measurement of our client. If not, at the end of the day, we wouldn't have that stretchy feel on her skin. For that matter, I have to take out half an inch from all the lines, that is the chest line, the upper bust line, the bust line, the under the bust line, and the half length line. So I'm going to be subtracting half an inch from all these lines. That way it will look so fitted on my client. Since I want to use 2.5 inches, if I subtract this half an inch that I want to take away, that will now give me 2 inches. So I'm going to be marking 2 inches. So when I'm joining this on the fabric, I'm going to be using 2.5 inches allowance so that everything will just sum up. Now everything is set and done. The drafting is done and completed. So I'm going to be cutting out what we will need just stick and stay and watch how i'm going to be cutting it so that when you are cutting yours you wouldn't make mistakes <laughs> are the pieces we will need for the center front when we are cutting it on our fabric we're gonna put the fabric on fold but for the side front we will need two pieces of fabrics now let's get started first thing i'll be doing is i'm going to be notching the bus point notching bus point helps in arrangement of the pieces during joining these pieces together time to draft the back piece i'm putting this fabric right here on fold Arranging it to make sure that I get the length correct. Once I was done with that, I'm going to be placing the front piece on top of this fabric. I'm going to be teaching you the simplest way to be able to get your back bodies from the front bodies. I'm currently arranging the front piece on top of the fabric for the back piece. And I'll be marking out some important points. I'll be marking out the half length, the brass point and the chest point. So next thing I'm going to be doing is I'll be tracing out the side front shape onto the piece for the back. This is going to make everything very easy for me. I'll be drawing and tracing out the armpit shape onto the fabric for the back piece as well. Still going ahead to mark the half length, the brass point and the chest point on the other side of the fabric. Then I'm going to be taking away the front piece and I'll be squaring out those points. Now I'm going to be determining the opening of my lace up. If you don't understand what I mean by lace up, watch your screen right now. You're going to be understanding. The opening of the lace up is the amount of space we expose at our back for lace up dresses. I want it to be 4 inches wide. But since my fabric is on fold, means I'm going to be dividing the 4 inches into 2, which will now give me 2. And I'm not going to be marking exactly 2 inches. This is because I'll need half an inch for joining allowance. So I'll be marking 1.5 inches. When I use the half an inch for joining allowance, everything will now be 2 inches. And when I open it up, everything will now sum up to the 4 inches that I desire. At this point, I'm done with the back piece, so I'm going to be cutting everything out. It's as simple as that. Our back piece is now ready. Very simple as ABC. So I'm going to be folding this other piece into two. We are going to be cutting the sleeve. 
Firstly, I'll be drawing these straight points which will serve as my starting point. Next, I'm going to be determining the length of my sleeve. And I'll be adding one inch for folding allowance. At this point, I'm going to be squaring the point. Next, I'm going to be determining the width of my sleeve. Using my arm around measurement and the allowances I intend to use. Moving to the bottom of the sleeve, I'm going to be taking away half an inch from the arm round measurement. I will be connecting those two points together. And that is it. Our sleeve is ready. I'm going to be cutting four pieces. Two for one side and two for the other side. Since I'm going to be folding and turning over this sleeve, I'll need two pieces for each of the hands. Next, I'm going to be cutting interfacing for the front piece. I'm going to be using this piece of fabric i'll be placing the center front on top of the piece of fabric making sure that the interfacing ends at under the bust i don't want the interfacing to fill the whole dress so i'm going to be lighting it end at under the bust this is for a reason as we proceed you are going to be understanding why i'm doing what i'm doing now and i'm going to be cutting out the same thing on the piece of fabric only that is ending at under the bust I'm also going to be cutting the two side front as well. It's also going to be ending at under the bust. When doing this, ensure that either the right side are facing each other or the wrong side are facing each other. Now this is my interfacing. Everything was on point. I'll be taking all the pieces to my knitting machine. I'm going to be knitting everything around. This was it. I'm done with the knitting. I'm now going to be having a very neat finishing at the end of the day. I'm arranging them pieces by pieces and we're going to be taking it to our sewing machine to stitch. This is my front facing pieces. With the help of the notch at the bust point, I'm going to be arranging it this way and I'll be stitching through. I also arrange and align the other piece and I'll be stitching through that way. This is the interfacing for the front piece. I'm going to be arranging it this way too and I'll be stitching. Everything will just align. If you do correct cutting, everything will just align. So moving to the back piece, I'm going to be attaching my zipper. Before I move ahead, I'm going to be arranging it on the table. To pin the zipper to the fabric before taking it to my machine. This will help me know the arrangement of the zipper before I start stitching. Now that I'm done with the arrangement and the pinning, I'm going to be stitching it this way. In that way, following my zipper allowance, I'm also going to be stitching from where the zipper end to the hem of the dress. So, following my zipper allowance, moving to the back piece now, I'm going to be arranging the back piece on the table. I'm going to be folding the neckline this way, do a top stitch on it. On the other piece, too, I'm going to be doing the same thing to it. Now, to the sewing machine, I'm going to be joining all that I have already shown you. Firstly, I'm going to be joining the front facing pieces together before I move to the other ones. Please, when you hear me say interfacing, I simply mean the lining. So, interfacing is also another word for lining. I'm done joining one side of the piece. I'm also going to be moving to the second side of the piece. Today, I have a question for all my viewers. And my question is, what are the differences between an eyelet, a grommet, an eyelet plier, a grommet plier, or a press? Please kindly let me know that in the comment box if you know the differences. And if you don't know the differences, so I have a detailed video about the differences. Kindly check that out after this video. I'm done joining the front facing pieces. And this was it. It was already taking shape. Next thing I'll be doing now is I'm going to be joining the front interfacing. Aligning everything and I'll start the stitches. I'm 
done with one side and I'll be moving to the other side. At this moment, I'm done joining the interfacing. The next thing I'll be doing now is I'm going to be joining the interfacing to the facing fabric. I'm going to be placing them right side facing each other. And I will start the stitching from the armpit area towards the neckline to the other armpit area. take note when i get to the dark journey area i'm going to be flipping the allowances side by side that way to make it easy for needle penetration when sewing this make sure you follow your joining allowance if it is half inch make sure you start with half inch and end with half inch don't shake your needle it should be a very straight line if it is half inch go by half inch if it is one inch allowance you go by one inch allowance when i get to the next that draining area i will be flipping it the same way i did to the first side and i'll be stitching through to the armpit side that is all for the joining now I'm done now. Everything is in place. Everything is perfect. I'm okay with the outcome already. Next is the back piece. I'm going to be arranging the back piece. I'll first of all be folding the armhole area with the allowances I left for that. Also, I'll be folding the neckline area too with the same allowances. And I'm going to be running a top stitch through. stitching one of the pieces and this was the outcome already i'm moving forward to stitching the other piece too everything is now set the back piece is set, the armhole area is well stitched and the neckline is also well stitched. So we are done with the back for now. And the next thing is I'm going to be inserting my zipper to the back piece of the down part of this dress. This is an invisible zipper because it's an invisible zipper. I must sew closely to the teeth of the zip. That way it will look more professional when I'm done with everything. Invisible zipper is not supposed to show. It's supposed to be hidden. That is why it is called invisible zipper. So it is not supposed to be visible. Make sure you sew very closely to the teeth of the zip. <laughs>
the zit after inserting my invisible zipper, it came out well neatly finished. After sewing my interfacing to the main fabric, I'm going to be notching the neckline. That way, it can make it easy for me to turn it without any scrambles. Once that was done, I'm going to be top stitching the sewing allowance towards the interfacing. <laughs> Just flipped it over to see how it's already looking. If I'm satisfied with that, then I'll move to the next level. As it was set and done, I'm going to be taking it to my ironing table to iron the same allowances to lie flat. <laughs> Now let's move to the next level, which is I'm going to be inserting the boning. The boning I'm inserting at this part is the Ridgeline boning, which is also known as the sew-on boning. I'm going to be placing it exactly on the same allowances of the bus pan, making sure that it is on the middle. That way, when I flip it over, everything will just be in place. I wouldn't have curved lines and all those stories. Okay, so watch how I'm going to be doing it closely. Since it's a sew-on boning, my machine can easily sew on it. And there are two parts of sewing this. You have to sew one side and move again to the other side so i'm going to be sewing two parts okay making sure that it's on the middle of that same allowance okay i'm gonna be sewing the first line throughout then i will flip it over sew on the second line throughout that way it gonna balance with the front of my apparel i'm gonna be sewing this bone into only the two sides which is that joining allowances at the bust pants. That's why I'm going to be inserting those boning. You know, two boning at the back and two boning in front. I'm not going to be using the same bonings throughout. Keep watching to see how I'm going to be making my way out these two different bonings. I don't use one boning when I'm making a dress. I use both the Ridgeline and the plastic boning. I'll be explaining that at the latter part of this video. Just stick and stay. See how I'm going to be working my way out these two bonings. And I'll be telling you why I don't go for one boning. Why I do what I'm doing. Okay. Before we even get there, let me just explain a few things about these two bonings. With the plastic boning, it's just plastic everything was just made of plastic and it's quite harder than the Ridgeline boning it comes in different sizes okay with that one you can't sew on it the machine needle cannot penetrate into that plastic it's very hard and with experience when you are using it for the back lace up of your corset like example what you are seeing on your screen right now it's quite helpful because it gives that structure to be able to tie the eyelid together without giving it any scrambles or any problems there i'm gonna make that side very straight which is a plus but when you use a regeline boning for this remember with regeline boning it's quite softer and it can easily be burnt i don't know if you are getting what i'm trying to say so if you use that at the back part of your laser it can easily i mean burn it can easily scramble like it wouldn't look that perfect than when you go for the plastic boning and now for the Ridgeline boning it is made of straps of plastic with thread so this is a combination of 
plastic and thread which now makes it a bit flexible and can easily be burnt compared to the plastic bony so with that one when you are now working on the front path of your dress okay on your front path of the upper path of your dress i will also advise you go for the regilene with experience for the best part of our dress which is the front part of our dress because of the curvy nature of our bust if you go for regilene boning it kind of assume the shape of your bust okay it will Take exactly the shape of your bust. At this point, I'm done fixing the boning. And this is how it came out looking so like. So, I'm also going to be showing you how to give it a neat finishing. At the latter part of this video, I'm going to be fixing the bra cap. So, the first thing I'm going to be doing is to mark my under bust point. I'm going to be locating my under bust point. That way, it's going to make everything easy. And with this same method, it's going to make your bust point, upper bust point, everything to just kind of align and fall in place. Let's start from under the bust. So, at this moment, I'm one of my bra cap mark locate the midpoint of the lower and the upper part and the other one also locate the midpoint of the upper and the lower part so the lower part of mark now i'm gonna use that to match up with under my bust point okay then i'll be securing it with a pin just as i said when you go with this method everything is just gonna fall in place so i'll be securing it with my pin and then i'll go ahead to stitch no now with the stitching there are two method you could go for the sewing machine or you could use a thread and needle so i'm also going to be showing you how to work your way around it the easiest and the fastest way to get your way around it and also the best way okay so that no stitch lines will show at the facing of your dress okay that's one trick i've given to you today as this is going on, let's continue talking about our bony. You know, corset is now trending and everyone is sewing corsets. If you don't understand the concept of corset, it's going to give you a lot of troubles. That's why I want to take time to talk about bony. There will not be a corset without bony. So understanding the concept of bony is the number one thing before you even think of making a corset. Pardon me if I'm putting much emphasis on bony. This is because it's a very vital aspect of corsets, okay? Now that I'm done, we're going to be stitching the bra up to the dress. I'm done stitching the first one off camera. I'm going to be using the second one to teach This you. is the same allowance, okay? I'm going to be stitching the bra up to the same allowance, not the facing fabric. If you go ahead and sew it to the facing fabric, it's going to look unprofessional. So you make sure that you are stitching on the same allowance, okay? That's the first same allowance. Remember, I bisected the two same allowances apart. So I'm stitching one side of the bra up to the other side i'm gonna be stitching it down to the bottom of the bra cap which is under my bust so make sure the whole thing is well secure thread your needle four times at this moment i'm moving the pin so that i can have full control over the bra cap when i get to under my bust i'm gonna be tacking it very hard there i will make sure i tack it there And after tacking, I will flip it over to the other side, okay, to the other side of the same allowance. Then I'm going to be stitching upwards again. I hope that is clear. That way, you're going to have double reinforcement. I'll be doing this throughout. I'll be doing this upwards to the other direction on the other side of the same allowance hey see mates there are so many ways of killing the cats this is just one way okay you can also decide to use a sewing machine or the hoo hoo glue the glue guns and a whole lot of ways are available out there hey girl hey guy go ahead and choose what works best for you if you want me to recommend any of these methods for you I will choose what I'm using currently because the reinforcement is going to be stronger than all the method. And then secondly, you're going to have full control over what you are doing. You can maneuver your way around the bra cap and the material. We are done. And everything is in place. Look at how it's looking like. Very firm. Very firm. Everything is in place. Marin is shaking. It's not going to change position. It's not going to move. It's just in place. Everything is on point. The under bath point, the bath point, the upper bath point, everything is just on point. Okay. So I'm going to be flipping it over for us to do another last thing. 
to get that neat finishing. Wow, look at that. It's already beautiful. There's no seam showing up on the face and fabric. Everything is just inside. You won't even see that there was a stitch. You won't see that. So the last thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be reinforcing and attaching the interfacing to the main fabric. But not for it to show on the main I'm fabric. I'm going to be attaching it to the same allowance. The very same allowance we attached the bra cap to. That is that same, same allowance. We're going to be tacking the interfacing to that way your bra cap is not going to be obvious for everybody to see that there's a bra cap so we are covering it up using the interfacing um, that was why i didn't give this fabric a lining it was a stretchy fabric so there was no need for a lining but i also needed to cover up certain things like the bra cap and some other seam allowances so the best way was to use that same stretchy fabric to give it an interfacing that's why the back there was no interfacing so i'm going to be tacking it so that the inseam allowances and everything just look more professional and look more like so i'll be doing that to the other side whilst i'm tacking that too i want us to continue talking about the boning boning is very important the one um have you ever seen a corset and after wearing it or after your client wears it you see the boning popping up and pointing at the upper bust area or at the half length or at the waist area and it becomes so obvious for everybody to see that mm, there is something there <laughs> it looks like a stick if you've experienced that before then what i'm going to be sharing with you it's gonna solve that puzzle. It's gonna solve that problem for you. Okay. To start with, now there are exceptions to this rule. I'm gonna be sharing with you. Some dresses like the kente corset dress, where they fix boning throughout the whole dress. Sorry to interrupt. I'm gonna be doing something very quick here. This is the back of the corset. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm gonna be cutting a facing for it because I'm gonna be uh, inserting the eyelet. I need to give a very short interfacing to it so that it will be firm when I'm attaching my um, eyelet. So just watch. It's just some short um, interfacing. So be watching whilst we are discussing about um, our topic. You see, there are some kente styles where the front part of the half length they actually fix boning throughout the whole front part that one is exceptional apart from that one you can use any bony that one it is best to go for the plastic bony but as such that when you are going for any dress that you don't need to fill up the whole front with bony then hi see you mate kindly go for Regilene boning. Okay. Regilene boning is firm and is flexible. What it does is that it actually takes the shape of wherever is going to be put on. Okay. Plastic boning has its shape that it moves with. But Regilene boning can we just pick the shape of wherever you are putting on. And secondly, you can iron it. Even the plastic bone, you can iron it. By ironing the Ridgeline bone, you can iron it to give you the desired design, the desired shape, the desired contour that you're looking for. Sorry, sorry, sorry to interact again. I'm going to be stitching the interfacing to the center Back. of the corset with right side facing each other. So I'm pinning it right now. I will take it to my machine. Before I even stitch it, I'm going to be overlocking. I'm going to be kneading. I'm going to be kneading the edges of the fabric, the interfacing I just finished cutting. Please subscribe in my future video. I'm going to be posting on if you don't have a serger machine, if you don't have an overlocking machine, if you don't have a kneading machine, but you need to knead up your apparel i'm going to be showing you how to knead it up with your normal sewing machine without any serger that's what i'm currently doing so i'm kneading it with my machine my normal stitch machine before i'll go ahead and attach so let's 
continue with the bust area look, look at that the upper part of the bust you can use ridling bone and iron it well it will be flat at the upper part of the bust then at the fullest part of your bust it's gonna curve the shape of your bust then it curve inside to your under bust and then to your half length that is how um nice is gonna look it's gonna give you that perfect shape okay so that is another trick i've shared with you today i'm so needing my interface and guys at this moment if this video has been helpful then make sure you click on the like button if it is not helpful click on the dislike button okay please help me to be able to know the impact of the video if the video is okay or if there is an improvement i must improve on so just do that for me it's gonna help me to help you you can also subscribe and be part of this wonderful family where we learn everything about sewing okay everything about fashion from hair to toe makeup lifestyle vlog i mean beauty tips sewing tips tricks shortcuts finishing like this is a pro master class channel you don't need to miss this if you want to upgrade if you want to level up if you want to be a pro in the fashion industry then this is the best channel for you be part of this family and you will never regret hitting that subscribe button it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe but it is going to pay you more than you can think it is going to help you more than you can think it is going to be a game and a life changer more than you can think and if you have any question any suggestion anything you wish to tell me kindly drop that in the comment box or you can send me an email if you also have any style any design anything you want me to do a video on or anything you want me to come and teach on or to come and elaborate on please don't hesitate to send me a whatsapp message on plus two three three five five zero nine zero nine seven four four please 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 only whatsapp message if you have any question feel free to send it to me i'll be around to help you out if you also want me to mentor you for free you can also send me that message i'm all there for you at this point i'm still joining the interface into the main back piece also i'm gonna be flipping the interface in right way and i'm going to be stitching the edge of the interface into the main fabric so i'll first of all stitch on the edge of the interface into the fabric then once that is done i will also move ahead to do same thing to the other piece please just watch closely you're gonna be understanding everything this is simple okay at this moment i was done so i'm going to be creating channel for the boning okay so the boning will not be at the extreme and because of the eyelids i'm going to be inserting i'm going to be leaving about 2.5 or 2 inches before i will mark where i'm going to be inserting my boning so i'm going to be creating a channel like this and i'll be inserting my bone like that so with this you have to consider the width of your boning the boning comes in size and the tiny ones medium large largest so depending on the size of the boning you know the width of the channel to create so at this moment i'm currently creating the channel for the boning Not doing same to the other piece. Now that I'm done, I'm going to be taking it to my ironing table to press everything to lie flat. Pressing while sewing is very cardinal and it's very important in garment construction and then in sewing. Please have that patience. Make sure you put on that extra patience to iron it whilst you are sewing along very good now that i'm done ironing i'm going to stop stitching the path where the garments and the interfacing were joined together it needs to be 
hold in place. It needs to be very flat so that it will help me to be able to insert my eyelid correctly. Nice. This is it. Everything is flat. Everything is in place. So we are moving on to the next thing. I want to take everything step by step so that you can sew along with me and achieve exactly where I'm getting. So don't be bothered about not forwarding some parts, not cutting some parts out. Please, I want you to get it. I want you to get exactly where I had. That's the most important thing, okay? Moving forward, I'm going to be inserting my eyelid. I've already prepared the material, I've already prepared the sprays, I've already prepared the canvas, I've already prepared the garments for the eyelid. So I'm going to be selecting the eyelid I'm going to be using. I have a lot of sizes there. I'm currently selecting 24 size. That's what I'm going to be using Next, today. I'm going to be marking the demarcations for my eyelid. From the upper part, I'm going to be um, coming down by one inch then from that one inch I'll be giving two inches braces for my eyelid if you go for one inch if you want them so close you could go for two inches 2.5 the highest should be three once I was done with the demarcations I went ahead to cut holes there are machines there that they use to perforate the holes but currently this is so heavy i have one there but the where i'm working on is so heavy and so silky for that to work on so i'm going to be using my scissors and i'll be perforating the holes please make sure your holes are not so wide that your eyelids become smaller than the hole it's better for the holes to be smaller for you to push it to enter than for it to be white so you must be careful at this point so that you will make big big holes and for the spacing now one thing about spacing the eyelet is if you have a lot of boning on your dress make sure the spacing between the eyelets are very close but if you have very little let's say two four um very few boning in your apparel then that one you could just give gaps okay so the higher the bony the closer the spacing should be okay like the kinted dresses where everything is just bony 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 that one you must make sure that everything the spacings are very close once the holes and everything was set i'm going ahead to fix in the eyelet then i'll take it to my eyelet machine and just press everything on so i'm fixing it before i'll take it to the machine just press everything on. Sorry for this part of the video. I thought I was recording when I was pressing the eyelid, not knowing my camera was not recording. So sorry for that. But I already have a video on my channel how to use the eyelid and everything you need to know about eyelid, grow mate, the presser, and everything you need to know about those things. This moment, I'm going to be inserting my bone. I'm done with everything, so I'm inserting my bone. So the back part of this dress, the boning I'm using is plastic bony because this side i need a little bit of firmness okay to be able to tie the lace up very well i'm using plastic bony not originally with that set and down i'm going to be arranging the front piece of the down part of my garment and i'm going to be joining them so i'll be joining the front up to the front down at this point i'm finding the midpoint of the front of my lower part of this dress or let's see the skirt and then i also find the mid point of the half length of this garment once i find the mid point i'm gonna join the two mid points together take it to my sewing machine and sew exactly as it was arranged 
For the back, I'm gonna be arranging it, making sure that everything is aligned at the side bar. I'll take it to the sewing machine and do same. Now, before I take it to the sewing machine, I want us to do a very quick finishing before. If you critically look at the boning, it is sewing from under the bars to the half length, which shouldn't be so. It's not professional, so we are going to be covering it up. So with the help of my thread and needle, I'm going to be folding the two allowances on top of each other. Then I'll gently and secretly sew the two allowances on top of each other for it to cover up the boning. I'll make sure that I'm using the matching thread, so that way, even if you look at it, you wouldn't know that something has gone on there so i'm going to be covering it for me up. to have a very neat inseam finishing so that is another way you don't need to show your boning like that okay so let's cover it up before we now take it to the machine and join everything together <laughs> joining them together i arranged them with right side facing each other that's both the back and the front pieces making sure the right sides are facing each other you see that everything has aligned so i'm going to be sewing my allowances and before i arrange it i make sure that i lace it up i place that rope in it so that it can make it easy for me to arrange it. So I'm going to be sewing out my allowances. And once I'm and done sewing the allowances, I'll measure the length of the dress and also fold in the hem allowance. And boom, that'll be all. The last thing also will be the sleeve. The sleeve is a simple sleeve I'm going to be making and attaching it to the armpit area of the dress. One thing I also did was to create a modesty panel. 
process that small piece of material you're seeing in the this one this is a modesty panel we put it in there so that the back of the person will not be showing that one is simple just a triangular material you stiff it and sew it together that's what i did I went ahead to lazy it up and iron it once i iron it up everything was lying flat and this was how it's already looking i also went ahead to attach this um just to get something similar to the style my customer asked for she's actually one of the subscribers so these are the sleeves the two sleeves simple sleeves that i made i'm just going to be attaching it to the armpit area of the dress and boom this was it she's she's so beautiful look at the shape very nice lays up everything was just fitting look at the bust area everything was heavy nothing was wrong with this dress everything was just in place oh wow. look at that she was happy about it so subscribers your location doesn't really matter okay you can place your order i do i deliver i deliver overseas outside of the country people living in kilometers and miles far away from where i am overseas everywhere around the globe i take all this okay thank you for stopping by and see you in the next don't forget to subscribe to the channel thank you bye bye